Welcome to the workshop. We would like to invite you to step inside and watch as Ferd creates the graceful Bombay curves of the federal credenza. He made a machine, his horizontal oscillating spindle sander, specifically to create the curved front drawers within the matching curve front of this edition. Let me show you a method of getting some of the work done in my little shop. For instance, we have a very nice cabinet here, been very popular, and I'm going to be making another second edition of this piece. This piece happens to be designed after the Hepplewhite style. Hepplewhite was a master craftsman in England, very popular. He had features that were eye appealing. For instance, in the body of his pieces, he did have design, intricate designs. He also had very beautifully tapered legs. He also had flutings and designs in those parts. One particular rather difficult part of this piece is to get the curvature of the Bombay. Now by the curvature what I'm trying to tell you is that a drawer is going to be in this spot. And the front of the drawer must not be flat as it is here. It will have to mend in with another drawer and become a curve. We'll call that a Bombay curve. To make a Bombay curve, we don't just do that by chisels and small little hand tools. We have to have something more accurate. And so here is a machine I'm going to show you a little about, which does the difficult task of making that curve so that the end result will contain the curvature of the drawer, the leg body, and the entire surface over here. So that when you pull a drawer out, you'll see that the drawer has an actual curve to it. Uh, this is not a flat part of the front face. This front face is a flat part. This has been thinned down, as you can see, with the curve. Now let's go to the machine that helps make this. The machine is going to make this curve that we have here. This has the drawers in it already. Prior to the drawers, we had only this skeleton. You can see that we're going to have to do a lot of sanding off over here to get that curve. We'll have to also have the drawers in place because the drawers have to be part of the same Bombay curve. Let's go to the machine for now and give you an idea of what goes on. Our jig that assembles the entire cabinet prior to going to any other jig is the assembly jig that it has to have the accuracy of a perfect 90 degree compressed into place so that it will mimic the exact shape that the next jig will accept. You can see that this particular one is ready to go in there. You can see how crudely the front of the drawer section is going to be in this shot when it's actually you're going to want to have the end result of this drawer way down there. So we're going to have to take off in the Bombay horizontal oscillating spindle center, we're going to have to take all of this off and a part of the drawer itself. That's why we have to have the tremendous accuracy and you can see over here that we are laid out so that the components will reach only to uh, certain parameters. When we're done with when we're done with this jig, which was put together with these compressible parts, we're no, we know that from the first part of this assembly that goes in here to the last part of this assembly that goes in, prior to being compressed exactly into place, we have to have an open time of glue. So that the glue that this will be our first joint, this glue joint, is going to still be liquid by the time we get the last glue joint in and ready to compress. 
We're talking of thousandths of an inch, possibly two, three thousandths of an inch. We would notice the difference. So that's why the jig is, crude as it may look, very accurate. So now, the end result, uh, the objective that we're going for is to make this Bombay curve in here. This Bombay curve is being done here in the in the jig that's made. This is an oscillating spindle sander, horizontal. It spins as it travels left and right. I'll give you just a little shot of it. Now with that movement, we keep on lifting our, our entire stock. We'll call it the stock because it's it's a cabinet that's in the making. We'll keep the stock within certain bounds. The certain bounds are being held because we have a template here and we have a stylus. A template is a path that will only allow you to travel within boundaries of that path. Let's say this is a stylus, a feeler that goes into and beyond the edges here, we can see that I cannot move anywhere outside that stylus. I am limited so that this machine will only allow that outside movement. In the, in the process of doing the curving, we have to make sure that we're set in there so we have special jigs. These little special accurate components are put in there so that we can get within, let's say, two, three thousandths of an inch. I know the machine looks crude. It's not meant to look beautiful, but it has the actual accuracy that I need. Why do I need accuracy? Because when I make an addition, I don't only make one of these cabinets. I make an addition, say, of ten. And each one of them has to fit in from one jig into another jig into another jig. And if we have one piece different in size than the second piece, we'd be in trouble. This way we know that we can be counting on the same piece being exactly the same shape and size as the next piece. And we have that within this machine. A gorgeous dark and light oval inlay adorns the top of the Federal Credenza. Greek key design along the edges and hand-carved corner florets supporting delicate tapered legs make this a very special addition, complementing so many of Ferd's other pieces. Six drawers are appointed with petite gold hardware, and beneath them is a hand-carved central serpentine flourish. Imagine this piece in the parlor, library, or in the dining room. Thank you for visiting the Workshop Wizard as he shared one of the ways in which he creates graceful curves in his miniature furniture. Delight your eyes and visit us online to see more of the Ferd Sobel editions. Thank you.